Hi everybody! I want to show you guys these things. These shoes, I just finished making them last week and I'm super, super happy about them. They're the first pair of shoes I have ever made in my life and I'm very proud of them. And today's video is going to go over roughly how I did it, kind of the story of how I did it and give some tips for people who are interested in beginning shoemaking and go over some of the tools you might need. If you are interested in this topic, definitely check out the blog post, which will be linked in the description because I will go into a lot more detail about exactly what tools I used, what I think is totally necessary and what I think is optional and just go into a little more details of the process for those of you who want to make a pair of shoes like I did. Let's see. I started these shoes um, when I was about eight months pregnant. It was kind of like my last fun sort of project that I wanted to get started because I'd finished filming all the videos I wanted to film. And so I started these maybe September, October-ish, and I just finished them. It's now March at the time of this filming. And of course, there was a long period of absence in the middle of that time period because I had a baby, obviously, and I took a couple months completely off of sewing or anything in that sense, obviously. But I got back to it and I just finished them. So let's just get into the supplies I got when I was starting my shoemaking. So the first thing you'll need if you want to make a pair of very structured shoes like these are a pair of lasts. Now this is one of the lasts that I used. Um, I bought these vintage on Etsy and as you can see they have these strips of leather added because these lasts were much too narrow for my feet and they were also too long. These are a size 10 and a half and my foot size is 9 and I have a wide foot and these lasts are actually more narrow than average but I really like them and they didn't have every single size because they're vintage so I bought these and I glued on these strips of leather to make them wider and I also sanded the toe to make them shorter while also keeping the pointed toe shape because I wanted it to have that almond sort of toe shape. Now I also bought leather. Um, I bought leather from Tandy Leather and I will link it below. I only bought two types of leather for these shoes. I bought a very thick leather for the soles. It was some kind of like saddle leather. In the future, I would probably just buy leather that's specified especially for soles because this leather is actually a bit too thick and very difficult to work with. Now for the body of the shoes, as well as the lining, I used shoulder leather. I think it was about two millimeter thickness or so. And that worked out great. Shoulder leather is a pretty high quality type of leather. Um, if I were to make these shoes again, I would buy shoulder leather for the outside the same as I did before but then I would buy some sort of very thin delicate leather for the lining because these shoes that while they turned out great they are a bit stiff because I used thick leather for both layers which you don't have to do but if you only want to buy two types of leather know that you don't have to buy all these you know different things you can just get away with the thick stuff for the soles and the thinner shoulder leather for the uppers. So I kept my tools to a minimum. If you start looking at shoemaking tools, it seems like there's basically infinite types of tools for very specific things. And you don't actually need that much when you're just starting. I primarily used a utility knife, craft knife, and I did get this tool. This is called, I think it's called a safety skiver. It looks like a potato peeler and it essentially performs the same function except on leather because on all of these edges of leather where the leather overlaps, you don't want it to be super bulky in the seam. So you would first skive the edges of the leather to make it as thin as possible to make that transition between the seams as smooth as possible. And this is a really good tool to start out with because there's no danger of skinning yourself or anything like that. I also got these lasting pliers. Now these are the pliers you use when you're attaching the upper over the last and over the insole. And you basically pull the leather down and grip it and hold it there. And then you use some lasting nails. I bought ones that look like this. They're just thin one inch long nails. And you use the lasting nails to then hammer it in. And it has this handy little 
knob thing on it to hammer in the lasting nails. Okay, so there's actually several little sort of things that I bought in addition. So if you want to get more details about those, then just go to the blog post. I will mention one more thing that I actually didn't buy until I was like three quarters done the shoes and I found it came in so, so handy. And if I'd had it from the beginning, it would have made the hand stitching go a lot quicker because these shoes were entirely hand stitched. I didn't use a sewing machine or anything. So that tool is, it's called the Speedy Stitcher. It's a sewing awl. So what's really, really handy about something like this, I'll just show you close up, is that it combines the tools of an awl and a sewing needle in one. Because as you can see, this has an eye on it, like a needle, but it's also an awl. So rather than having to go through and poke your holes through with an awl and then go in and sew it later with a needle, you can just poke right through with this while you're sewing. And it essentially creates a lock stitch, the same as a sewing machine would do. You can see the thread comes out of here. There's a bobbin inside and the thread goes through your needle and you sew it that way. And while I didn't use that method for the uppers because I didn't know about it at that time, I did use that method to sew the welting as well as attaching the sole and sewing the sole all around the outside edge. Oh yeah, and another thing I wanted to mention is that I did actually create these shoes using the like old fashioned, really solid construction method of Goodyear welting, which was definitely more tricky. And I will say that if you've never made shoes before, beware because I came very close to wanting to quit because of the welting. The welting was really, really rough and I actually didn't technically complete it perfectly, but I still created it in a pretty solid way. I'm pretty confident that these shoes will last me a long time for the most part. I mean, there might be some minor, I might need to replace the soles or add another piece of leather on the bottom here. The paint is wearing off, but anyway, I'm really happy with that I, with I chose to do the, you know, old fashioned solid type of construction method because that's what I'm super into on this channel as you guys know. Okay, and the last thing I wanna talk about is just how they fit and how they feel now that I'm actually wearing these to walk around and go outside. I am actually really, really shocked that I'm even able to get them on my feet because this, this um, opening turned out a little shorter than I'd planned, but I can get them on my feet and they fit surprisingly well. Um, I was also worried they would still be too narrow in this part even though I built up the last because I do have pretty wide feet but they actually feel great on the width of my feet and if anything they're still a little bit too long in the toe but they still look and feel really great and they're super comfortable to walk in. They are definitely stiff. They need to be broken in because like I said I used the thick leather for the lining and it, it would have been better if I'd used a thinner leather for that but they feel great. I'm really really happy with them. So if you are interested in just seeing more details about how I created these shoes, especially if you are interested in doing something similar, then definitely check out the blog post. I will get into a lot more details and I will share photos of the actual making process as well as photos of the tools I used and the names of the tools I used. And I will also leave links in the blog post for some very helpful resources I found. Mostly free resources, by the way, because there are a lot of like shoemaking courses out there, but they're super, super expensive. Like we're talking thousands of dollars just for an online course. And I was already kind of spending a lot of money on the supplies I needed for these shoes and I wasn't ready to invest that much in a course when I wasn't even sure if this was something I was going to pursue. So on my blog post, I will be linking some helpful free resources that I used that really walked me through how to create these. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, leave your comments and questions below. And like I said, check out the blog post, check out my website. I have an email list that you can subscribe to and consider subscribing to my channel for historical sewing as well as future shoemaking videos. I plan on filming the entire process of whatever the next pair of shoes I make will be. That won't be for a little while, but I'm definitely already feeling excited about that, that project. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Bye.